excited to have you joining us today and talking about converting more leads. Um, Jaime should be joining us in just a minute. Let's see, there's his request. And we'll go ahead and approve Jaime to come in. Excited to be sharing this information with you all. Um, as you know, we do all that we possibly can to make sure that you are able to get leads and convert those leads. And here's Mr. Jaime. What's up, Jaime? Hey, hey, hey. All right. Everybody, let us know if you can hear us okay. Um, as usual, let us know if you can hear us. Let us know where you're coming from. Um, and uh, we'll kick off this call. Awesome, awesome. All right. Slash. So I think we're good on YouTube. I think. So let's check real quick. All right, so as you're coming in, a huge favor, if you wouldn't mind letting us know where you're listening from, and that's going to really help us out because that means that you can hear us. <laughs> so if you're responding to the request, that means that it's working. So really do appreciate it. We should be live on several Facebook groups. So it's going to take us two seconds to drop these links everywhere we need to be. And we appreciate you being here, part of the Agent Lead Source podcast. All right. By the way, um, our our uh, our uh, visuals look pretty nice, Jaime. I have to say, if you're again, if you're uh, coming in, let us know if you can see us clearly because it looks like the lighting. For some reason, I feel like there's a beauty pan or something, and it's uh, it's our beauty filter maybe. Feeling really, hey. feeling really. What, hey. what do they say? Feel, feeling cute might delete delete later. I think that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, and, I no, like that say. your references, Joseph, are at least in this year, you know, because <laughs> I'm, I'm used to your references being a little bit dated. So um, I'm glad that you're you're adapting right as this we get out of the year. Yeah, these are facts. You know, I, I, I want to make sure that I keep 2020 in everybody's mind whenever going to 2021. That's my that's one of my goals. I love it. <clears throat> I love it because we all want to remember this year. <laughs> You Such know a what? Great year. At at the risk of sounding like a like a jerk, you know, honestly, for me, 2020 was actually a pretty good year, all things considered. I do like to um I am negative sometimes, but I do like to, you know, see the positive in things as far yeah. as of course this was a huge it. I mean, this is something that was absolutely terrible for the situation. <clears throat> but in terms of business and personally, thankfully, um, I've just been incredibly blessed. So I'm at the risk of yeah. sounding like a jerk. Just wanted to share that. No, I, I think I agree with you. And, and obviously there are people that are going through a hard time right now and, and, you know, still going through a hard time right now with 2021 and jobs and things like that. Uh, but <clears throat> for us that are uh, uh, in our companies and being in real estate, it's still a good situation to be in at this point in time. So I agree with you hundred percent. Obviously we, we care for the people that are going through things that we feel for them. But um, at the same time, that doesn't mean that you you shouldn't feel blessed for the things that you have and you've been able to accomplish in, in 2020. So yeah, not, not the, not the worst year in the entire world, but it's definitely not the best year for a lot of people. Right, 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 right. All right. So we have somebody from California and we have, um, so Brian from California, Dave is, um, Ooh, calling you out, Joseph. What did Dave say? I didn't even, I can't even see. What did Dave say? Not oh, you're, that's on YouTube. That it is on YouTube, so not good to have that light behind you, Joseph. And we were oh. just talking about that. We were just talking about that. Well, if it was on YouTube, I'd ha it'd be a totally different structure. But since we're doing Facebook, it's uh, I'm not worried about the fanciness. But yes, I agree with you. And also, that's why that's a there's a blind there, and you can't actually see the cityscapes. Um, and yeah. that's very intentional, pulling that down. Might put a black blind back there one day, but today. Dave, you just get to see this beautiful face with a very <laughs> harsh background. <laughs> but I agree. All with right. You. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Agent Lead Source podcast. We're really excited to be here. We're really excited that you decided to join us as we talk about conversion. As we know, conversion when it comes to real estate leads is. I was about to say incredibly difficult, but it really isn't. Um, yeah. It's something that is incredibly important, though. And that's really why we wanted to highlight this right as we were finishing the year. Because as Joseph and I have mentioned numerous times, we don't necessarily see 
generating a real estate lead all that difficult. We're not trying to sound cocky or brag or anything like that. It's just not. You can have conversations with a lot of people very quickly through social media and other platforms. But the more difficult thing, something that's a little bit more challenging is the conversion. So that's what we really wanted to break open today. Yeah. Yeah. So again, as Jaime said, thank you for joining the call. We're going to talk about lead conversions and how to convert people easily because I think a lot of people think they have to do all these magic things to get people to work with them. Reality is you treat people like normal human beings and they will convert um, and start working with you and do business with you. So uh, excited about this conversation. I, I, I tend to have this conversation a couple times a year with different agents. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation with you so we can share our ideas with the masses so they can convert people and buy and sell more houses. I love it. I love it. I love it. So as we get right into it, if you wouldn't mind hitting that huge like button right in front of you, that's going to help us out a ton. If you're listening from the uh, from the podcast, uh, the Apple podcast, then a five star is going to go a long way. I know the self-promotion shouldn't happen until five minutes down the road, but I always miss my cue and Pat, our <laughs> producer, gets incredibly frustrated. So we're going to get that out of the uh, out of the way early. But as we break open episode 22, real estate, um, I'm sorry, how to convert real estate leads quickly in this conversion masterclass. We're going to take it as a given that you're generating real estate leads. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, that's crap. <laughs> there's a lot of other podcasts. There's a lot of other episodes that we share with you how to actually <clears throat> generate the real estate leads. So we're not going to really spend too much time with it. We're going to invite you to check out the rest of our catalog and how to use Craigslist, how to use Facebook Marketplace, how to use YouTube, how to use Facebook groups, how to use Facebook ads, how to use YouTube ads, how to use every type of platform because we're on episode 22 and I can guarantee you that we have covered a way to generate the lead. So taking that as a given, when a lead comes in, whether it's a free, uh, a free lead or a lead that you pay for, the follow-up is going to look relatively the same because at the end of the day, you are looking to have a conversation with the lead that comes in. It doesn't matter if you paid $50 for it or you paid $0 for it outside of having an internet connection. The way that you follow up doesn't need to look all that different. So as a pure basic follow-up, we can get into the strategies of sending out an email and sending out a text instantly. So as an example, if you're running some Facebook ads and are generating some real estate leads that way, it is very standard and very common and super expected at this point that somebody gets an email, somebody gets a text instantly. If you're not doing that, you're a little bit behind. So I would just want to set the standard right now, set the absolute fundamental, and then we can build from there. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of industry standards uh, that, are, that are starting to come to fruition, if you will, Jaime. And, and those things that you hit on after a lead comes in, sending an automated email, automated text, or if you're doing it yourself, at least it gets there as soon as possible. There are some tricks too uh, that I'll talk about later um, to get people to respond faster. But yes, I, I think the expectation now is that, hey, if I put my information in here, I'm going to get some type of response from this person or this company, right? It's a matter of how you send that message so that people don't think it's just automated all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the best ways that you can automate everything, we we're talking about um, some responses that we'll get into it, but one of the ways that you can automate everything, very simple, with the CRM. It doesn't matter which CRM you use outside of you actually using it and the fact that it has that functionality. Now, we're not going to get into the naming game here because none of them have cut us a check to sponsor the podcast, so we're not going to give them some free promotion because that would... um. That would not be very business savvy of us. And as you know, we're businessmen and yeah. um, very greedy at that. So when it comes to the <laughs> CRM, <laughs> you like how so you greedy. check so, so much? <laughs> so, so greedy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this for free. Um, uh. But when it comes to the CRM, um, it's going to do that for you. It's going to have the email autoresponder, or text autoresponder. So look for those key features. Again, we're just giving you a, sta a starting point. Really, at the end of the day, the call is what's going to be important. Is the calls that actually sell yourselves, give you an opportunity to validate the person. There's a lot that can come across that is communicated from the lead as soon as you're speaking with them. So getting to that phone call is extremely important and it doesn't have to be 
you don't have to qualify everybody right off of the bat. You don't have to vomit a lot of information. You just need to start reading people. And one of the best ways to engage, one of the best ways to actually get people on the phone is asking them, when is a good time to connect? Yeah. It's that simple. You're not necessarily, it's people, people think people like being on, in control, but you'd be surprised how uh, controllable, this sounds bad, but how controllable <laughs> they actually are if you limit their options. So yeah. sending them something like, hey, here's my calendar, invite yourself whenever you want is a good way for somebody not to invite themselves to your calendar. Yeah. But as opposed to, hey, uh, when, can, when uh, can you connect tomorrow at 3 p.m.? Can you connect tomorrow at 6 p.m.? Give them some options. They're going to select one of the two. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, right? And so people will actually do what you ask them to do. Does, it, does that mean they'll necessarily follow through what they said? Not necessarily, right? They, they use, they're going to use every opportunity to, be, to get out of a situation that they don't want to be in. Now, I'm not saying that they don't want to buy a house or they don't want to sell a house, but maybe they just don't want to talk to you at that particular time. But you, by doing what Jaime said, you're allowing yourself to be put in a position to then have that conversation with them and allowing them to then select that specific time. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's really amazing whenever we start talking about people in psychology and, and you know, psychology of actually getting on these phone calls and converting these people into what we need them to be, which is home buyers and home sellers. Um, oftentimes, they will not even know that they are in a position to buy or sell. So it, as Jaime stated, it is quite important that you make sure that you are getting on these calls so you can figure out what their, not only what their pain points are in buying, but also find out where they are in their process. How much, how much, how much do, do they know about the home buying process? And I think if you can say, hey, this call is basically just to find out how much you know about the home buying process and, and helping you, you know, find your way into what you're wanting to accomplish or home selling process and helping you find um, what you're trying to accomplish, again, keyword being help. If you do that, then more people will convert to wanting to, to chat with you. Always use the word help because people love to help people. And it's, uh, it's just, you can, you can Google it. There's a lot of psychology behind people wanting to help people. Absolutely. Joseph, one question I had for you as I was uh, messing with my camera, it was kind of being silly. One question I have for you is, would you recommend a agent race out to meet somebody physically? Let's just say they had a good conversation um, and without necessarily qualifying them as much, would you recommend that they, um, they have that in-person uh, conversation or meet with that person and start showing them homes? Or how far into the qualification do you like seeing agents? Oh, man, that's a good question. I actually had this conversation with an agent the other day, right? Um, a lot of the stuff we do whenever we're doing organic marketing produces leads that may not be ready immediately. So there are a couple ways to look at it. Um, if you know the person has a solid job, right? You know where the company is. You, you know how much those people who work at those companies typically make. Then I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say rush out. But if the person's at the house and they want to see a house and some, somehow they got in contact with you, yeah, I think it's worth rushing out. But the majority of people are not going to be that, right? So uh, we do a little trick. Um, essentially, what we do is we say, and now we're getting into a little bit of, of the, the how-to, Jaime, but I'll go ahead and, and say that here. We do a little trick that's, um, you know, hey, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, thanks for jumping on a call with me, or even if it's a text message. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about where you are in your home buying process. Let them tell us. Great. Um, well, you know, you, what neighborhood you're looking in, blah, blah, blah. It's, I see that, you know, based on this form, this is where you're looking. Cool. Let's do this. Um, I don't want to send you houses that, uh, that may not be in your budget, either too low and they don't fit exactly what you and your family are looking for, or too high and they're too expensive and they don't fit what you're looking for. The only way we can find that out is if you speak to a lender, unless you're buying with cash. And then at that point, we can talk about how much cash you have on hand. I'm sorry, are you buying with cash? No. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's do this. I'm going to send a group text message. I'm not going to send an email because it'll get lost between somebody, between you and, uh, and my uh, preferred lender. They're their name is so-and-so. They're fantastic. They're all about helping people. Again, helping, right? Uh, is that okay if I do that? 99% of the time, they're going to say yes, because they want to be helped, right? And so they're going to help you through the process. They're going to help me understand where you are uh, in your buying process, how much you can afford, how much you, you uh, can afford. And we're going to have a very specific plan on the type of houses that we can look at uh, in the next week, right? Or the next couple of days. 
would you like that to, to happen? Is it okay if I send a text message? And so, boom, yes, cool. Text message sent out to my lender, uh, between the lender and the, uh, the, the buyer and myself. And so I can track everything through the text messaging, right? And so that's just a small trick that we use to answer your question in short, Jaime, uh, to make sure that we're not rushing out to meet people who may not even be able to buy the particular house, right? I love it. I love it. I love it. So early on, I was not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Early on, there is um, you get you get um, you get dressed and you go. <laughs> Somebody's winner. buying a house today. I get <laughs> yes. There. Yeah. Yes. Cash and checks. Finally. <laughs> uh, no, thankfully I didn't. I never had that issue. So that's a it's a good thing. Get not a I'm not trying to be boastful, but it was an issue. <laughs> so when it comes to one of the things that I do encourage agents to to ask, even you know if especially if you're starting new, because a lot of the uh, viewers right now, a lot of the listeners do, uh, given where we, uh, where we do our, our marketing, are newer agents, uh, it doesn't hurt to get some reps in, right? Mm -hmm. Especially starting out, it's a, good, uh, it's a good opportunity to go out, practice speaking with people, practice opening doors, as silly as that sounds. There's some lock boxes that should have been burned a hundred years ago, but <laughs> agents are still using those. Uh, there's just a lot of different nuances that are overlooked. So it gives you a good practice, especially you and I um, did uh, do the real estate in Texas. So we know that mostly um, giving that IABS, that information about broker services, that's something you have to do um, legally. So it's something that it gives you a good practice with that. But one of the things that is, is pretty cool and that I, I've been uh, sharing with a lot of real estate agents, when you're having those conversations, always be looking for that opportunity to be introduced. And then it's not a wasted trip. So let's just take that into, into the practical application of it. So as you're touring homes or as you're showing the person for the very first time, maybe a few gaps start uh, being noticed where, okay, well, this person may not, um, may not be ready. Oops. <laughs> so that's yeah. when you start, even before then, that's when you start looking for who else can I help back to your point, always probing, Hey, are you the only one looking is, you know, is a family member that, you know, was it a family member that kind of gave you the idea? Hey, let's start looking for property. You start finding out a lot and you're going to get a lot of, oh yeah, my brother-in-law was thinking about buying a house, but they're considering it next year. Oh, cool. What's that person's contact information? Of course, it's going to be a little bit more tactful, but right. you're starting to build the database of who can you introduce me? Because even if they do not write an offer after that first day or ever, because they just wasted your time or tire kickers, as we all like to say, at the yeah. end of the day, you are just through one person can, that can be your advocate, they may feel not the greatest that, hey, maybe I did waste this agent's time, but I helped, I helped them out by giving them my brother-in-law's contact information, my sister, my X, Y, and Z. Because at the end of the day, if somebody is looking for a house, chances are, and I don't know why this is, but chances are they know somebody else that's actively looking as well because yeah. they're in contact with them. I don't know why it happens to be that, that case, but I have never been proved wrong with that. Yeah, Bir birds of a, f a feather flock together, right? That's, that's typically- Right, uh, that's right. water saying. seeks its own level. That's right. So yeah, you know, um, what's up, Melita? I believe that's how you uh, say your name there. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I think that whenever you, you look at converting people, it's not just converting them, like you said, Jaime, it's converting their, their context as well. Because a lot of the time, especially when I've spoken to some of our agents, they're like, you know, so, and I've told some of these stories before, a lot of the times our agents will come across somebody who hasn't bought a house yet with them, but they have referred people to them. Like one agent, I think had uh, one person that referred two or three people to them. And that person never even bought a house with that agent, but they enjoyed the conversation so much and understanding that that agent was there to help them that they're like, you know what? I have other friends who are thinking about buying. I'm going to introduce them to, to so-and-so agent because they, they seem to know what they're talking about and they seem very uh, friendly and very helpful. So d never be afraid to say, Hey, do you happen to know anybody else that's looking to buy or sell? Because you know me and, and my goal is to help, you know, people buy a house the right way and, and not put, put themselves in a uh, bad situation, but in a great position. And a lot of the times people will be like, yeah, I know so-and-so has been thinking about buying. Cool. Can I, can you send a group text message? I would do group text message. Can you send a group text message between us and introduce us? Right. 
I don't want you to give me the phone number and I don't want their phone, want my phone number going to them because they may not answer my call and they're definitely not going to call me, right? Most of the time. So uh, can you send a group text message and then boom, I've got them where I need them, right? They, they, they have to block me to get away from me at that point. <laughs> you know who's really good at that type of um, networking? I, I don't know why it is, but financial service people. The yes, people financial yes. services, they are really good at that. And I, about once every week, I now maybe not a week, maybe once every two, yeah, once every two weeks, somebody for, that I went with uh, to college will group message me <laughs> with, um, yeah. hey, this is somebody that I knew, X, Y, and Z. And of course, somebody in financial services, I'm not trying to knock anybody that's in financial services. I think right. that you're amazing at networking. I mean, I think that you're amazing at being connectors because a lot of that is relational based. A lot of that is very trust based, kind of like real estate, yeah. but in that space, it just, um, as you're giving that example, it happens to me quite a bit. Um, and it's just a, it's just a really good strategy. At the end of the day, I, I have to find a way personally, because I don't necessarily need that at that time. I find a way to politely say no. It's very hard yeah. for me to just straight up, dang. I'm just going to yeah. block these people. Um, it's yeah. very hard for me. I know some people do, but it's very hard for me to dismiss it all together because it's yeah. that whole kind of like social proof. It gets a little bit hard for me to say no and get away. Yeah. Well, uh, so what you're telling people is go work at Ed Edward Jones office uh, or um, somewhere for a little bit, spend the day there, ask them how they do their follow-up. I think the people would, you know, agents, I think agents would be amazed to see other people's business and how it's run. Go sit in an insurance office for a day. Go sit in a, a financial service office for a day. Go sit in, um, in a, a loan officer's office for a day and see what they're doing on the day-to-day. -day. How are they following up with people? What does that look like? You might learn something really, really good that you can take and implement in your business. And I guarantee very few of them are going to say, nah, don't, don't come hang out with me because you're you're, you are the catalyst that helps them actually do business. People aren't buying and selling houses. But they're not doing business. So I think you'd be really, really interested in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to start a movement. Um, invite a, I was about to say coworker to work day, but that's not going to work because they're coworkers. Yeah. <laughs> but that'd be good. That'd be good. So as we're talking about conversion, a lot of the things that we've been discussing has been about chasing in a way. So reaching out, doing the, uh, you receive the, the lead again, it, with, whether it was through Facebook, whether it was through Instagram, through LinkedIn, wherever. And then at that point, it's your responsibility to reach out to them and connect with the individuals in order to have a conversation. But that is still chasing. That's still reaching out to people and having a conversation. But at the end of the day, where everybody wants to be, or at least maybe I'm projecting here as well, you want to be chased. You mm -hmm. want people to come to you. You want people to gravitate towards you. And one of the best ways to do that is provide something of value. And I know that's so cliche or, oh, okay, here we go, Gary Vee. But when it comes to providing value, that means something that is true, something that helps somebody, ideally in that moment, it's going to establish your credibility and your authority. And it's something that will go a long, long way. And it's going to resonate with somebody that, um, that you provided value to. So I'll give you one example. If you go live, if you just try it this next week, if you go live, every single day and provide a tidbit of uh, a, just a little tip uh, on how to buy a house or how to sell a house or how to flip a home or X, Y, and Z. If you provide something like that, again, just go live less than three minutes, less than five minutes, provide something of value. You're going to be surprised how many people DM you. You're going to be surprised yeah. how many people comment. You're going to be surprised how many people actually reach out to you because they saw you. You provided something that was meaningful to them. You provided value, again, giving you some actionable ways to provide value, and you establish yourself as the authority where people will actually chase you. It sounds weird. It sounds odd, but it's going to happen. It's something that gives you some other platforms. YouTube is phenomenal for this. Facebook is phenomenal for this. Facebook groups is phenomenal for this. Oh, and by the way, the Agent Lee Source podcast has covered every single one of those platforms and shown yeah. you not only just, hey, you should do this, but giving you some actual, hey, copy this and implement it and boom, you're going to get some people. So that's a way to get people chasing you. Again, not trying to sound both. Why do I keep saying that? 
what am I trying to hide, Joseph? I've said that. I don't know. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not trying to say, but I'm trying to flex. No. So what happens is you're, um, you know, at the amount of information that you provide, the amount of information that I provide, people come to us. And I mean, that's just a reality where people actually, I'm not going to say chase us, but people actually do reach out to us and they're yeah, they seek us questions, out, right? clarification. There it is. Seeking us out. And that's where a lot of people want to be. A lot of people want to have uh, wake up to a bunch of DMs that they can respond to and either get, get them to work with them in some capacity or maybe somebody that doesn't live in the same state. You can do a referral. So many different ways to have people reach out to you. And that's a fantastic place to be in. Yeah, well, it, once you once you establish that part, right, where and what I call client attraction, right, or law of attraction, um, once you establish that part, and, and as we go back to the statement of converting people, those folks are easier to convert because now they know that you're providing something of value, especially once they've gotten the, the item and they've gone through that, right? Um, and some of you watching this have probably gotten stuff from me, right? You, you've probably seen some of my posts, you commented, my team has sent you out information. And that's very intentional because I want to establish a relationship uh, with you to let you know, hey, look, I'm not some random off the wall marketer. Uh, My goal is actually to provide value to you, right? So we give free courses, we give free material, free posts to market with, right? And with those items um, and and doing the same thing on the real estate side, then that that person, that particular person is like, oh yeah, you know what? I actually, thank you, Joseph. This is fantastic information. I'm going to utilize that. And eventually, a lot of the time, those people become clients, right? And so that, that I think, establishing, as you stated, Jaime, giving people something of value and having them seek you out, right, um, will uh, then turn them into a client eventually, right? And as, as long as you continue to consistently do that, they get to know you and know who you are and know your personality, know the real you. And if they like you, they'll work with you. And it's really that simple, right? Just building that relationship and helping people. For sure, for sure. So I want to give you some quick props because um, somebody else did. I know that I kind of bashed you at the beginning. My bad, Joseph. But <laughs> we have Crystal in the comments section. Your oh. team, Joseph's team, is currently testing my market. I yeah. don't, I, well, actually, I have a semblance of what that means, but just so everybody's aware, what is up? Uh, what's Crystal referencing testing out your market? What's happening? Yeah. So actually, Crystal, somebody I think I've been connected with Crystal for some time now. Um, and Crystal has seen our information out on the, you know, on these lives on, you know, information that I post on my personal Facebook. And she is now um, with our team and our team is testing her market to see if it's a good fit. Right. Uh, with that, what we're essentially doing is we're saying, all right, Crystal, we're going to put a we do a part time VA. Part-time VA is going to go do postings, lead, uh, uh, lead generation, um, and follow-up for her, right? So that's essentially what's happening right now. They're testing her market to see if it's a good fit. Now, of course, you know, we can generate a ton of leads. Some of those leads may not convert. Some of them will. Um, it just depends on the market, right? But our goal, basically, with somebody like Crystal, Crystal has followed us for a long time. We've sent content to her. She's, she's gotten to know who I am. And now she's in our program getting her market tested to see if we can generate leads for her. Essentially, is what's happened. So I want to unpack that for a quick second. Did you pay anybody? Did you, did you run an ad to get, um, not necessarily her, but people, well, her and people like her? Uh, no. So for the most part, we don't run a lot of ads, right? Uh, we probably, I would say at least 95% of our business is organic, right? And so these are people who are, um, are seeing our information or seeing me talking about the stuff that we do, showing some of our results. Um, just like if you're a real estate agent, you show houses sold or this person bought this house or this person is qualified. It's the same thing for us on our end, but we just, we're, we're just always, we're just consistent, right? So to answer your question, no, we didn't have to pay for that because we're just connecting with people who are of our target market, right? Crystal's an agent. That's what, that's who we serve. So it's the same thing. And let's say, for example, let's use Crystal. I, I think they answered your question, by the way, Jaime, hopefully. Um, and then I'll go on a little bit of a tangent, but let's say the same thing for Crystal. Crystal can talk about houses she sold, people that she's helped buy a house, uh, so forth and so on, on her page. And by doing that, people are going to see that in her market and be like, oh, Crystal knows what she's doing. You post houses, new construction houses on your page all the time. Like, guess how much this house costs? These type of things will intrigue people and they'll want to be a part of that. 
<laughs> nope. I, this is Crystal. Nope, I just stalked him over the years. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm going to replace this word for you, uh, Crystal. Stalked, uh, I would say followed. I think followed would be a better, <laughs> more comfortable for everybody. Say, I'm kidding. But yes, yeah, so that's what's happening, right? And that, great to your point. To your point, what you're saying, not this doesn't work just for us. This working across the board. So this is exactly what we're talking about with your clientele, with your home buyers, your home sellers. You're going to have a lot of people that never comment. You're going to have yeah. a lot of people that are just watching, 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 watching. But it's through that repetition, you showing up, you showing up. Yeah, your lives may not get more than two people watching them. Okay, yeah. let's just be honest. Because I suffer through that quite a bit whenever <laughs> I go live. But here's the thing. There's that replay. You don't know when somebody watches one from last week, you know, unless you're tracking those numbers, you don't know when somebody is going to watch. What they see is high mirror send is went live or is going live. That's powerful. They see it again yeah. next week. They see it again a, a week after that. And it just continues to happen. So when somebody is ready to do a real estate transaction, keep in mind, real estate, what's the average every seven, seven years, Somebody moves, like they move from there, they upgrade or, or make a real estate transaction. So this isn't like you're buying, a, what's a good example, buying your groceries every single week. It's not, yeah. it's not that repetitive. So you're showing up, you're showing up and it ultimately happens. But as you show up more and more, that's where a lot of the conversion comes into play. And I know that this is probably not the message that most people want to hear. I understand that it's... um. It's uh, it's not the sexiest thing to talk about. We talked about emailing, texting, um, doing some doing some calls and all that fun stuff. And now we're talking a little bit about attraction marketing, but it works. It just give you one example of Joseph that's happening right now. There's a ton of other examples of the agents that Joseph works with that I work with that it's happening for them at the moment. That's the whole reason why if you in real estate can make it to year three, year four, year five, it's not that it gets easier. It's just that compounding effect that you helped enough people that they're going to reach out to other people. You get the referrals. There's that little tipping point. Some people experience explosive results the first year where they sell 50 houses, which is insane. But then yeah. there's some people that sell 10 houses. Yeah. And then 12 houses and then 15 houses and it just snowballs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the more time, just like investing, right? The more time you're in something, the better it becomes, right? As, as you stated, the compound effect. The more times you go live, the more times you post about new construction, the more times you post about somebody you helped buy a house, the more times you talk about how many people are in your database that you're excited to help, right? Your database grows. Your follow-up, then uh, your conversion of those people then continues to increase. It's just like a steady process. And it, it, as Simon said, it may not be easier, but the process, the systems start getting better and better, right? And, and that makes it somewhat easier as you have those systems in place. Like every Friday, my morning, I know every Friday, Jaime and I are going to go live and we're going to come to this group. We're going to talk to agents about what we're doing in our business so that you can then utilize in your business, right? The first couple of weeks, I was like, man, uh, especially I was the one up late, Hyman, and we switched, right? But we'll switch back at some point. But the first couple of weeks, I'm at my office at 11 p.m. at night, right? And this is true. Yeah, and it was tough. And I was like, man, this is this is exhausting. But I know what's going to happen if I keep doing this over and over again. And now week 22, um, that we're 22, 23, 24, we're somewhere in there. We'll call it week 22. <laughs> the lost we're, episodes we're, joseph <laughs> the, lo the lost episodes we're, those things are happening right like we had people that are converting reaching out to me like hey man and i i think i said this last week i really appreciate appreciate what you and jaime are doing it's helping my business grow it's helped me understand how to do better business it's helped me to to become more efficient and that's exactly why we do this is because the more people get to know us, the more they see us, they may want to work with us. But at the end of the day, we're helping people and they notice what we're doing. And, and that's really important. It's the same thing for selling real estate. Exact same process, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Joseph, let's get ninja for a quick second. So sure. a lot of people like to get tactical and that's what we give quite a bit. We've given you plenty of tactical stuff right now, but we're about to get, we're about to get silly. So 
we're not we're not even going to ask you for your credit card right now. We're going to get that later. <laughs> we're all, we're this confident. When it comes to um, when it comes to conversion, we understand that it's showing up, showing up, showing up. That's what we've been talking about. But as you know, in in the title, we talked about real estate conversion and real estate converting quickly. One yeah. of the best ways to do that is to show up again and again and again. And one of the best ways of doing that is through paid advertising. Now, yeah. some of you may have done paid advertising in the past. Some of you may not subscribe to that, whatever the case may be. But here's basically the two-step formula. You're getting traffic. It doesn't matter from where. When I say traffic, I mean attention. I mean yeah. eyeballs or, or ears or whatever. So whatever, you're getting people's uh, you're getting traffic. You're getting people's attention. So that's one. But the second step is super important. Where are you driving that attention to? Mm. So where are you driving the people to? Are you driving your? Uh, are you driving all the people that you're running ads to to your landing page, which happens to be your website? Are you driving yeah. people to your YouTube channel? Are you driving people to your business page? Where mm -hmm. are you driving people to? That's very important because oftentimes. We get so disjointed, myself included, where I'm going to do this podcast with Joseph and then we're going to send him off over here. And then yeah. we're going to do this over here and then we're going to send him off over there. And you're just sending traffic, diverting it every which way. And what's happening is you're not allowing that compound effect to work for you. You yeah. are, it's like, um, it's you're depositing some money over here in this bank. You're depositing some money over here and this other bank, you're depositing some money over here with your cousin, which is a terrible idea. And you're just going <laughs> wherever it is, right? Um, with your primo, Joseph, just, so primo. Like, just for, for our, our people. <laughs> so you're going and spreading yourself out and you're not allowing that, uh, that compound effect to take over. And the reason that that's not a good thing is because you're not able to retarget them later coming full circle to the conversion with retargeting, you are showing up again and again and again and again and again. And it's a lot cheaper than you expect. So you can retarget on Facebook ads, on with Instagram ads, with YouTube ads, with Google ads, if you've paid the quota. And there's other different ways that you can continue to retarget. But here's the problem. One, you never set up your uh, your website to have the uh, Facebook picture as an example, yeah. the Google yeah. tag as an example. You didn't position yourself that way. And then yeah. beyond that, you sent every somebody to your cousin that just was not, you're, no way for you to track that person. You're sending yeah. people everywhere and you're not able to retarget them later. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, convert, like when we start talking about converting people, there, there are multiple ways. And one of the ways time is talking about right now is you show them something and then you follow them later, right? With an ad, right? And so, there, there are uh, tactics in doing that. We call this, you have levels to this process, right? Level one is just letting them know who you are, giving them something for free, right? It's like level one, level two. Level three is then coming back and requesting uh, or, or saying, hey, notice you visited my website. Are you still thinking about buying a house, right? Are you still thinking about selling a house? And so you're retargeting these people and you can make it all videos. You can make it, you know, uh, a vertical ad. You can make it, you know, the normal, uh, horizontal ad but by retargeting people your conversions start to increase i'll, I'll give you guys a, um, a tip let's say for example you live in a city that has a large population of people who work for a particular company um, what you can do let's say let's use hp computers as an example wherever that headquarters is um, and you live in that particular city you target that company the people who who are employed by that company or they say my employer is that company you can run an ad and say, hey, if you work, you know, my name is whatever, uh, let's say, use my name. Hey, my name is Joseph. I work for XYZ Real Estate. Uh, right now we're running a special um, for um, homeowners and home buyers who work for HP. If you're interested in learning more, click below and there's an informational video that you can access that'll tell you exactly what we offer, right? So that whole conversation that I just had took about 15, 16 seconds. Then they'll click on the button go get the information. When they get to that landing page, I'm then, I have my pixel on there as Jaime stated, and then I can retarget them with more information later, right? But I also capture their information because they have to give me their information whenever they fill out the form, right? So now I can text them, I can email them, but I can also follow them 
and say, hey, I noticed that you got my uh, got my informational video about the special that we're offering um, and the, new, the other ad. Are you still thinking about buying or selling your house? If so, I have another offer that I think will really interest you. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, click here to send me a message or click here to call me or click here to, to send me a text message. And then you're just converting people up the ladder. And every time they see you or see your face or hear your voice, they start to know you better and better. And it, yes, it takes time. And of course you can do all the stuff that you're normally doing to get business. But then you're converting these people long-term and they become higher quality leads. And that's one thing that I think real estate agents don't understand. They're not willing to wait for some of these higher quality leads, right? Somebody who works at HP that has a solid job that might own a house or might be willing to buy a house. And we know they're probably gonna have good credit score if they're working uh, at a good job at HP. Those are higher quality leads. Those will just fall in your lap. And if they did, you'd be selling 200 homes a year, right? And so uh, you have to be willing to do these things uh, properly to, to make sure that uh, you're converting people long-term because it's a long-term game in real estate. I love it. I love it. I love it. Speaking of doing things properly, I'm going to share with you a way not to do it. <laughs> but, there you go. Uh, this yeah. is one of those. I'm hesitant to share this, Joseph, because not because I, I, not because it, um, it's a little bit gray area. It's a little bit okay. gray area. Just, um, just throwing it out there. <laughs> but <laughs> if your ad account gets shut down, not my problem. You chose it. I just disclaimer here. This is just disclaimer. I'm just giving you one of the strategies that may or may not oh. be working. I can't wait to hear this. Just may I'm just get throwing it out there, Joseph. Um, I don't want to hear anything about it. Our attorneys are standing by. Just be aware yeah. of that. This is something that hypothetically if it could happen. Just throw it out there. <laughs> hypothetically. So hypothetically. hypothetically, what you can do is create an ad account and create a business page that doesn't have to do anything with real estate. Because as we know, whenever you're running Facebook ads, as an example, you have to go through the special ad category. Yeah. So that is something that happens, right? But if you create a business page that has nothing to do with real estate and you have a certain targeting, whatever happens to be over there, that is very, um, let's just say conducive to real estate, but, um, but it's not real estate and you run those ads where you're driving people to a certain landing page and collecting their information either through a pixel or collecting their information through opt-ins, again, hypothetically, what then you can later do <laughs> when you like, are actually... <laughs> can, I, can I say, I just like how your voice inflection went higher as you're like, <laughs> what you could do. <laughs> Uh, you're anyway, saying what, could, what you could do, it, and I'm not going to finish this because, again, our attorneys are standing by. So what <laughs> you could do later on is run an ad that happens to introduce whatever you do, and we know what you do. So anyway, just want to throw it out there. That's, um, that's totally your call. Do whatever you want. It's your business, your life. You're the master of it. However, <laughs> hypothetically, that might work. <laughs> hypothetically. Just, hypothetically speaking. <laughs> and I do expect somebody to Venmo me that because oh, you man. know you know if you if you pay me that's going to be the the solidifying that uh anyway. So what else you got, Joseph? Oh man, so okay, so are we are we talking about gray areas of getting people and converting them? Um, yeah, at this point, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think so. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas to the to the back side, the, the back. Uh, uh, I have a feeling this marketing. is going to be part of our lost episodes show. So. <laughs> This we'll blow this part out. Gonna be, yeah. But I, th I think it, I think it's important for people to understand some of this crazy stuff that happens in the marketing world. All right, I'll give you an example. There are some tools out there. Again, as Hyman stated, uh, disclaimer: your account gets shut down. You do this, decide to do this. It's part of doing business, right? Um, you might have a secondary account, whatever. Um, but there are some tools out there that allow you to go out to public Facebook groups. We all have these public Facebook groups in our cities, um, whatever, maybe uh, let's call it, um, you know, city of whatever, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the, one of the right terms, but basically all these public Facebook groups that are in our cities. You can go use a tool, scrape that entire list of people that's part of that group. <laughs> I was already smiling. Uh, take that entire list of people, uh, create a lookalike audience, um, and then do a, like a, a lookalike audience and only target that city. 
And so what you're doing is you're creating a highly, highly, highly targeted list of people uh, in your city that are um, part of that Facebook group. And it's, it has to be an open Facebook group using the right tools. I'm not, don't message me for the tools. I do not want to be a part of this situation. I'm just telling you what is available to you to create the most, one of the most highly targeted lists out there um, in marketing. But anyway, enough of that. Those people, you can find them. Anyway, that's all I got. <laughs> I like it, man. Uh, we are, we're going to need to like delete this. <laughs> 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 but hey you know you know what you signed up for so this is a great reminder though this is a great reminder yeah. joseph that if, as you're listening if you're on facebook a thumbs up goes a long way it really does help out there's a reason that we broadcast where we broadcast in these groups because it gives us access to most people we're not silly we're not dumb we know what we're doing but it only works if you hit the like button. That's going to really help us out. There if you're you on YouTube, a huge like is going to go out a long way. So more and more people get notifications that we are live. But if you're listening to this in the podcast form, if you're on Apple Podcast, a five-star review goes a long, long way. It's a fantastic way to continue spreading the message. And it's a great way to, um, to grow, the, uh, grow the podcast game. So that's going to really help us out. And um, we we just hit a big milestone. I can't remember which one it was, but we hit it. And it's just through that repetition. So huge reminder, yeah. five-star reviews go a long way. Likes go a long way. Sharing, tagging, all that fun stuff. We really do appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's a good it's, reminder to do that. Awesome, Jaime. Yeah, we appreciate it. Absolutely appreciate that. One thing I want to do for the people who are watching right now on YouTube and people who are watching here on Facebook, and obviously listeners can't do this, but... Um, what I, what I would like to see is people comment what type of leads that they would like us to discuss uh, on converting, right? Because I, I feel like whenever somebody says, all right, I want to convert this type of lead, it's impossible to convert this type of lead. We're going to talk about it right now. So drop the type of leads that you generate that are hard to convert and we'll tell you how to convert them. I feel like that's, that's probably one of the easiest things to, to do to show relevance on how easy it can be to convert leads. So if you have a certain type of lead generation that hasn't been converting well, you haven't been able to get in contact with the person or those leads, drop the type of leads in the comments and we'll, we'll have a conversation about that right now. <clears throat> I dig it. I dig it. All right. All right. In the meantime, here. in the meantime, as people are, are com and you can, if you have question time that are coming up in there or comments, you can definitely share them. Um, in the meantime, I'll talk about this. Um, I, I am a big fan of just being a real person, right? Um, and Jackie dropped an open house and we'll talk about that in just a second uh, from our perspectives. But I'm a big fan of just being a real person, being real, treating people like you would treat your best friends, not your worst friends. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> your best family members are not your worst family members. And our, our and, grandparents, Joseph. <laughs> our grandparents we had a conversation about. Um, but it, you know, if, if you treat people like a real friend, a real person, they are more likely to convert over to being a client. Uh, actually, I, I was having a conversation with one of our agents and uh, one of her statements was, you know, she has a virtual assistant. And one of her statements was, you know, they started off as, you know, quote unquote, employees, team members, but now they are like friends, right? And it's because our VAs know that that type of personality and understanding people, um, and obviously they're just friendly people in general, but that will convert people and keep them working with you for a really, really long time, right? So th I think people who are watching this, as you think about converting, quote unquote, converting people into clients, convert them into friends first, right? If you like them, right? Um, convert them into friends first and naturally the client part will take care of itself. And that's, I, I mean, that's probably one of the easiest things to think about in, in regard to, to converting them. I like that. I like that because it's very, although it doesn't appear actionable, it's extremely actionable because you know how to treat people, right? It's one of those things that it diffuses the situation. You don't feel like you have to have all the answers. You're not put uh, on this pedestal. You're not putting yourself on a pedestal. You're just speaking with somebody. You're just yeah. having a conversation and that's really attractive. This is what people like to call right now authenticity. Because yeah. although it's um, it can be a cliche at some time saying be yeah. authentic, be authentic. It really is rare. It really is rare. It, we do like to present this facade of um, I'm perfect. 
I got all this dialed down, but we're human. We're imperfect. We make mistakes yeah. and um, that we're not excluded. So that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Joseph, one of the things that, uh, well, actually let's, let's talk about the open house. One of my all favorite right. ways to convert an open house lead is as soon as they bounce, send them a video, <laughs> send them yeah. a video of yourself Hey, thanks so much for dropping by the open house. Really enjoyed getting to meet you and your family. I think that this will be this house would be fantastic for you if you decide to go down this path. But if you're interested in seeing other similar floor plans in the area, just let me know. Boom. Yeah. Oh, love it. Love it. You, I, you want me to tell you how I got one of my first clients? It was from Do open it. house. Jack, Jackie, and this will be for you because you you asked the question. By the way, Jackie, um, and, and I, actually, Jackie, you probably seen this one of my training videos. What I, what I used to like to do is um, I would ask people, hey, how many open houses have you visited today? And they'll tell me whatever, how many open houses. And I'm like, cool. Well, what I like to do is take selfies with people who visit my open houses and send it to them as a, as a memento for them searching for houses. Would it be okay if I do that? And, you know, some people say no, but the majority of them say yes, right? Because And those are the type of people I want to work with anyway. I don't want to work with somebody that's like boring and not fun, right? Uh, even if they are selling a million dollar house. I might, but... Um, so what, what I always, what I would like to do is like, hey, I like to take selfies with people who visit my open house. Would it be okay if we take a selfie um, or we can take a selfie in front of the house too so that you, you remember this house, would that be okay? And people are like, yeah, sure. And so we'll take a selfie. And so what is going over people's heads right now is they're like, why, would, why the hell would you take a selfie with somebody <laughs> that you don't even know? Well, it's because they're thinking about buying a house. And if I get the selfie, guess what else I get? I have to send it to them. I get their phone number, right? So if I have their phone number, I know who they, who they are, what they look like. And now I can do exactly what Jaime said. I can then also send them a video saying, hey, thanks so much for visiting. I know it was weird probably taking a selfie with a random real estate agent, but I just want to let you know what my personality is like. So if you do decide to buy and you need a real estate agent, uh, I'm here to help you. And that rapport is like, you you just want a friend probably for life at that point because they're gonna be like, man, this person really is like, this is who they are. Right. I would go. And one of the things I used to have a goal of doing is having um, people say, man, Joseph, I like working with you so much. You're a per type person I go have a beer with. Right. And so I used to work to, to say, OK, if, if I were talking to somebody, if I were talking to myself, what would I like to hear to make sure that I would get that type of response? Right. Man, this dude's so cool. I go have a beer with him or I go have coffee with him or whatever. Right. And if you think about your conversations in that mindset, like you'll convert people so much easier, right? And, uh, and that just becomes natural. That's a way to stand out. That's a way to stand out. And I like how you prefaced it with, um, it, it's, it's often overlooked by real estate agents that, yes, maybe four people came through, through your open house. Maybe the market's a little bit different right now because people are lining up. But if you're talking about, four groups coming into your open house every single hour, you know, that's not necessarily a bad metric, but yeah. what people overlook, what agents overlook is you're not the first open house. Yeah. You could be the fourth, you could be the 12th. And at, by that point, if they don't have a real estate professional guiding them through, giving them the MLS sheets, doing some, you know, what real estate professionals are supposed to do, it's easy for them to get lost. And Hey, did that house have that fifth room? no, Wait, what about that? No, yeah, no that one yeah. didn't. And it's just be, it becomes in incredibly frustrating. But what you've done is you've separated yourself from the pack. No, it's someone that with that crazy real estate agent or that fun real estate agent, however they want to categorize you. But here's the thing they're talking about you as opposed to the other 12. Yeah. So that's yeah. power. That's huge. Yeah. Now, Joseph, one um, one question that hopefully you, you um, uh, so that Pete asked, uh, as we're talking about conversion, he asked about uh, converting seller leads with my Chime CRM. And as I read that, I might need a little bit more help with that. Pete, are you asking how to convert seller leads with that CRM system that I won't repeat again? Or, or, or what exactly? I'm not sure if I should have thought that one through, Joseph. No, no, seller that's leads. okay. I I, I, I mean, I think, I mean, if he has a seller lead database or if this, if his chime or that company's website, or they create uh, landing pages, I think, yeah, we need a little more detail on, on how to answer that. 
Um, as far as con con uh, converting seller leads, I think one of the, there's a great real estate teacher out there who does it for free. And I think some of you would know who he is. Um, his thing is just like building a relationship, asking them what you can do for them, right? Hey, you may not be selling your house today, tomorrow, next month or whatever, but what can I do to serve you, right? And that's, again, it just all comes down to helping people and asking them what they need. You may think they need all of these things, but at the end of the day, they probably don't need all the things you think they need. They may just need somebody to tell them uh, if they need to paint a room or to fix a floor or to patch the hole in the wall, right? Um, so you just want to be, uh, Pete, to answer your question in short without talking about the CRM, it's just asking people, hey, what do you need to help uh, to help you if you're thinking about selling your house, right? Maybe you need a what lawnmower. <laughs> do you need a lawnmower? As soon as you sign on this dotted line through the, uh, rep, uh, the agent rep agreement, I'll gladly get you. I got it. I got you. Be riding I'll, too. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll mow it for you. Yeah. He, uh, when he comes, so he provided a little bit more clarification. I have ads set up in email blast. So I guess sure. it's the follow up that's being asked. So what okay. I would say is make yourself attractive, Pete, in the sense of providing something that somebody that's looking for a home is going to find incredibly valuable. And it just, um, I mean, of course, what Joseph mentioned, getting to the, to the root cause by asking questions, by how answering a question that they actually ask is, I mean, that's paramount. But if yeah. you have somebody that's not responding to your emails, not responding to your texts, not resp responding to your calls, then you're limited, right? Yeah. So what you have to do at that point is make yourself attractive. Make yeah. yourself somebody that is somebody that can get chased and kind of goes back to an earlier point. One of the best ways to do that is provide something that is valuable. You may be shooting in the dark, but you have a lot of emails. You have a lot of texts. You have a lot of phone calls, which means voicemails that you can leave allowing different, uh, allowing different messages to go through. You don't know which one's going to strike a chord because you haven't been able to speak with them but providing yeah. information on mortgage rates, providing information to the best of your ability of what prices can do next year with real yeah. estate, providing the best neighborhoods in the area according to X, Y, and Z. So yes, you're doing a little bit of shooting in the dark, but you're providing something that is valuable to the individual that could potentially be looking to buy or sell yeah. in this case. Yeah. So Pete, let, let me ask you this. How many seller leads do you have in your database, right? You're running these funnels. You have all this going on. Hey, I'm going to give you a tip. <clears throat> and there, I, I guarantee there's like maybe 1% of people that are doing this in the United States that are real estate agents. Joseph, so, uh, so, we, so we have a, so Joseph, he just actually responded something I think um, is, is critical here. Go ahead. Good point, Joseph. I may be overthinking this. The automation has taken me out of the equation. That's right. At times. Yes. And he has yeah. 20 seller leads, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people try to automate everything. What they don't realize, most companies who are selling you automation, you were on a phone call with that person live. So they don't automate everything. So think about that. Um, so as good as it sounds, you need to be a real human being, like I said earlier, and, and provide that human factor. So I'll give you a tip, Pete. You have 20 seller leads. Uh, marketing companies are really good at this, especially individual marketers that are, are like top level. What they would do is they will record a video of your Facebook page talking about the things that are missing on it, right? And then they'll send that to you and say, hey, I think these are the things that you could do to improve your Facebook marketing, your Facebook business page, so forth and so on. You're like, man, this guy took so much time to record this video about my business page. That's really interesting. I'm gonna keep, at least keep in touch with him or at least send him a message and thank him. What you can do is you can do a screen recording. You can pull up their house since you have their address on this on the MLS, and you run a CMA and say, "Hey, you know, whatever so and so's name. Uh, hey, I'm going to do a live CMA to show you what your house uh, what your house could potentially be valued at if you decide to list. You know, I have to list with me, but um, I always like to provide as much value as possible and show you what this looks like uh, so that you have it. And so you just do a screen recording of you talking uh, on that video." Uh, about their house and then you send that to them via text message via email um, any way you can get it to them via pigeon um, you get it over to them and now it's you showing them how to value their house and then you can follow up and say hey by the way if this is something you're considering doing you know this is the number that I think your house could sell at 
if you want a net sheet, let me know and I'll have my, um, uh, my, my title company pull up a net sheet, right? And then I can send you that and that'll let you know how much, house, how much equity you'll pull out of your house, how much cash you'll take out of your house if you do decide to sell or maybe move up or whatever. So you know what your, your walkaway number is. So you just like, you've just passed every freaking agent that is thinking about, uh, they're thinking about talking to like immediately. And it will take you 30 minutes to just do all this work. And so Pete, that's what I would do. And you can message me later once you get a listing, because I guarantee you'll get a listing by doing that process. 100%. That's powerful. That's powerful. That is huge. That is huge. We all have the, um, and I had this conversation, hopefully um, I'm not going to mention her by name, but um, if you're out there, you know exactly who I'm talking to. The uh, <laughs> this um, very much this this agent, uh, a, a newer agent to to my team. She was trying to automate her way out of the the that conversation. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we 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 had a conversation of hey, um, this this route, this automated CRM, that's great. That's a placeholder. Just understand that that's a placeholder because we know those automated CMAs are not very good, are not very yeah. accurate. A lot of agents talk about, oh, Zillow, ha, 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 ha. Well, Zillow is yeah. much better than the CMAs that you're offering through the <laughs> CMA. It doesn't matter which one you're talking about. Yeah. But when you, have, um, when you have a CMA request, I love your strategy of doing that video and providing something that's completely different. Another way would be as soon as somebody requests the CMA, getting on the phone. A lot of agents are afraid to get on the phone and well, I don't have the CMA ready. Well, you don't need a CMA. You yeah. don't need the CMA ready to have a conversation with somebody. Going back to your earlier point, well, hey, just reaching out, want to help you in the best possible way. I see here your address is X, Y, and Z. Is that still accurate? Yes, it is. Awesome. Well, before I can do a thorough analysis of your home, you, you received um, an automated report that I think is okay to start with, but I need to yeah. get a refined version to you. Before we can, before I can give you a solidified good range, I need to know: Have you updated your home? Yeah. No, no, it's it's been three bedrooms. And then you go through the conversation, and you you don't always have to keep it on the CMA. Oftentimes, yeah. you can actually get away with not doing the CMA and actually yeah. show up to the house and get the listing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, after you do that, right? You go. Hey, would it be okay if I came came by to, to take a look at any work that you've done or any work that might need to be done, so we can also look at what it might cost you to to have to do some of this stuff, right? Um, and so now you're just getting there, and you're just, you're again, the whole conversation about converting people is just helping them, like finding ways to provide value. Like a lot of people talk about value, 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 but we're telling you what value looks like, what value is. Mm. And if you provide this Preach. type of value, then at this point in time, whenever you're talking to these people, they're gonna be like, man, these guys really, or this guy or this gal, they're really here to help me you know, sell my house, right? Or how fast do you wanna sell your house? All right, we might need to do X, Y, Z. Do you have any issues with your roof, right? And so you're just talking about the things that they might need to do. And so, I mean, going back to Pete, because Pete, my, my target at this point, right? Um, Pete, these are things that, you know, you could just do today. Like it's so easy to do these things that, that we're talking about. And it's really just getting out of your comfort zone if you're not comfortable doing them and testing it. And the worst that could happen is people are like, no, I'm not gonna list with you. Cool, at least you know, and you move on, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean you, you, yeah. And that, that doesn't mean you stop, stop sitting in CMAs and stuff. It just means, hey, they're not ready to sell right now. So don't take it personal, right? And again, Pete, I don't know your personality or anything like that. I'm just telling people in general who watch this and listen to this, don't make it personal. Uh, but making, helping people personal, right? Don't take it personal if they decide not to list with you. By the way, Pete took it um, incredibly well. He gave you the, the peace emoji <laughs> <laughs> or the prayer emoji, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. So he's, he's all on board. Awesome. Uh, Joseph, <clears throat> as we get ready for the dismount, because Pat is screaming in my ear. Mm. Um, actually, you know, what you said was, uh, was actually so good that it might be the, it might have been the dismount without us knowing, <laughs> but as far as we're talking about conversion, there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, one of the things that I, I really want to stress upon is show up as frequently as possible, whether that's a free way of doing that, whether you're doing video, whether you're doing, uh, 
post, whether that's doing um, what emojis, whatever it happens to be showing up frequently and often is going to go a long way. You're at least taking uh, shots, do making attempts to convert yeah. somebody as opposed to never calling, as opposed to never emailing, as opposed to never posting, as opposed to never texting. Because at that point, you are guaranteed to have somebody not work with you. So that's really, yeah. those were my parting thoughts. Um, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you think? Yeah, if you don't take a shot, you're not going to have a shot, period, right? Um, so uh, my parting thought is this. If you want to try to get seller leads um, today, and again, we're always about actionable items and converting these folks over, uh, here's what you go do. Go post on your Facebook page right now, how many of my friends own a house? Right. How many of my Facebook friends own a house? That's a simple question. Again, simple is sexy. I believe in that. I think simple makes the most money in the entire world. Uh, so you go post, how many of my friends own a house? Let them uh, comment. Awesome, great. Then you send them a Facebook message. I'm giving you a full funnel right here, folks. Then you send them a Facebook message. Hey, James, thanks so much for commenting. Um, how long have you owned your house? Cool, whatever, don't care. Um, what I care about is, and you don't have to say it this way, but you say, hey, James, uh, we're running a new, um, I'm uh, testing out a new system where I'm uh, running a home value report via video. Uh, is it okay if I use your address to do this and I'll send it over to you so you can see what it looks like, right? There you go. You just, you have a friend who know, like, and trust you. You know they own a home and you know, now know the value of their house and you can add them to your database. Guys, it's not hard. You just have to. You should literally just have to ask people the right question. And then from there, you can convert them into where you need to convert them, right? And so if you don't get a listing from that, you can do that once a month, all right? Listen to me. You can do that once a month. And if you can't get a listing through 2021 by doing that one strategy, you need a bigger friends list. <laughs> and if we can't you. get at least five likes in the next 10 seconds <laughs> from that, then we're going to stop the podcast altogether. So I mean it. I mean it. I'm monitoring right now. I'm looking at the likes and um, I'm not seeing them. So that is, that's good, right? I mean, I, I need to see some hearts going on around here, guys, or, or the podcast ends at episode 22 and an asterisk to it. So that is powerful, folks. We were talking about dropping mics. Um, that's a, a mic dropper. We're talking about actionable strategies that's actionable to you that's something that you can go out and implement today that's something that any other coach had they even thought about that they'd be charging you for that right now thousands so of dollars. think about the impact oh yeah exactly. i could hear i could hear the coaches right now you know one of my ideas that i have is uh you know next month whenever we get on our call after you pay me another two thousand dollars uh, per month uh, is I'm going to give you that idea, but let's go ahead and end the call right here. And we'll talk to you next month after you pay my, ne my next $2,000. Right. Anyway, uh, sorry for the, the paid coaches out there. Love you. Um, anyway, I mean, that's all, that's all I got for the day, folks, go do that strategy, run that, run that post, um, get, get your friends who own a house, send them, do the, the recorded video CRM and go get a listing. Just do it. I love it. I love it. And we did meet our quota just FYI. So we will see you. <laughs> I was counting. Um, so we will see you next week on the Agent Resource Podcast. Again, a five-star review is going to go a long way. Likes are highly encouraged. Tag somebody that you feel can uh, use this information. So that means every real estate agent out there, all 1.3 or 6, however, million licenses are out there. We want to see everybody that's an agent on the broadcast next week. <laughs> Thursday at 8 p.m. Central. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys. Love you. Appreciate you.